Oh. Hello and welcome to Tiny Blue Games. I, of course, am Seesaw or Chris, and today we're playing Guild Wars 2. Now, it's been a while since we've played Guild Wars 2, and I am sorry about that. I've just been playing a lot of Wildstar since I've gotten to 50 recently, and I've been having a lot of fun. If you haven't checked out the game, I do recommend you try it. I mean, I'm obviously going to always have a, heart, a spot in my heart for Guild Wars 2, and I'm not saying, you know, hey, join Wildstar, quit Guild Wars 2. That's, that's not at all what this is about. Um, in fact, Guild Wars 2 is one of the best games, you know, in the market for this, being that you can, you know, essentially play for free once you've bought the box. Uh, and that's such a beautiful thing that you can try out new games while you play Guild Wars 2. That's how they keep everyone playing Guild Wars 2, because it's not costing you nothing. It's just fun whenever you want it, and that's the beautiful part. Uh, so back to the topic of the video. Um, I wanted to play on my Engineer uh, and try a new build for you guys, and I, I wanted to try the Engineer in Guild Wars 2 because I do play an Engineer in Wildstar, and I wanted to do some comparisons, as well as I wanted to try out a new trait. Uh, the trait in question that this build is going to focus around is Experimental Turrets. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is one of the new traits that they added a few months ago. Um, and what it does is it pretty much gives you and your allies a buff um, depending on what turret you have out every 10 seconds. And each each turret's going to have its own buff tied to it. So we're going to choose the turrets depending on what buffs we want. The ones we chose are um, the healing turret, which we were going to take anyways. Um, and that's going to regenerate our endurance quicker, which is great for everyone to have more rolls, especially for us as we're a kiting class um, because we're trying to survive. And next we have the uh, rocket turret, which is going to give us retaliation. Um, and that's going to be beautiful because you're sort of the group healer and you're going to get targeted. So if you have retaliation on yourself, that's going to do a lot of damage to their group. Um, so even if they do kill you somehow through it, they're going to really, you know, sort of hit their own team hard, right? So that's just something great to have. And then we're going to have the uh, Thumper Turret for the protection, and that's just going to keep us alive as well as our group. Um, next, we're going to look at uh, the uh, next alchemy trait. We're just going to go through traits first, I think, and then look at skills. Uh, we have Backpack Regenerator, and that's um, very handy because we're going to have the Bomb Kit in our hands all the time, uh, which we're going to talk about the other traits that's going to be linked to this in a few uh, moments here. But we're going to have the Bomb Kit because it's mostly going to be our heals as well as our damage, and if it's going to be healing us for you know 200 whenever we have it in our hands, that's just going to be additional healing. Uh, we move to Gain Protection whenever you are disabled. Uh, projection, uh, protection injector, and this is great because if you know you've played Guild Wars 2, you know that the most amount of damage comes right after you've been knocked on the ground by the team, or like stunned, or you know just stuck somewhere, and that's when they're going to hit you hard. So if you get an extra bit of um, damage mitigation on top of when that's happening, it's really going to help you survive in those uh, sort of crunch periods. Uh, the points in between that we get are the uh, deal extra damage for each boon you have on you, really handy with the boons we're going to have on us. Um, incoming conditions have a chance to convert into boons, just, you know, a pretty awesome thing to have. <laughs> uh, and then we have gain, fury, might, or swiftness. Uh, drink elixir B whenever you're struck while below the threshold, 75%. Just more buffs, which really ties in well with all this. Uh, next we move to inventions. And this is where the next big trait comes in, and this is elect elixir-fused bombs. So this is why we have the bombs on our bar all the time, and this is kind of why you're going to be a combat healer. I mean, obviously your healing turret, your you know sort of mist and all that are going to heal people, but you're going to have the healing bombs as well. So you're going to really be jumping around and just dropping bombs in amongst your people and the enemy people, doing damage and healing. And it's kind of a really cool build um, as you're getting into the mix combat yourself. Uh, and then the little in-between thing, we have gain power based on your healing attribute. Uh, this is very handy because we have a lot of healing attribute, as well as our damage is primarily from, well, retaliation does a fair bit, and then we're also going to have just a flat-out hit from our bombs and such, which the uh, power is really going to help us with. Uh, we've got power shoes, movement speed increased by 25%. This is handy in the fact that we're just going to be doing a lot of kiting, running around, um, it, running to bases. It's just a handy thing to have. Uh, next, we're going to have automated medical response. All heal skills recharge when struck while you are below the threshold, which is 25%. This is very handy in the fact that, you know, we got our healing turret here. And, you know, it's always nice to have a new heal whenever you uh, get below 25%, because that's when you're looking to your bar and like, oh man, what can I do here? Um, so a very handy thing to have. 
Metal plating is going to reduce the damage dealt to our turrets by 33%. Kind of an interesting trait choice. Honestly, like, before the turrets were ever useful, people used to probably, like, why, why would you ever take this? And I'm going to tell you why. It's because nowadays I've seen people actually come and attack my turrets first because they know the build I'm running. Uh, especially if you're against another engineer and he knows of this, they might try to take your turrets out right away. Uh, and if you could just reduce it, and the 33% isn't a lot, but it's it's very important, especially in cases where your uh, turrets are getting AoE damage done to them. This could be the difference between them dying quick in the fight and dying at the end of the fight. Uh, so a very interesting thing to t uh, take, but you could switch this out to something else if you wanted. Uh, low health response system, gain regeneration whenever you're struck while below 25%. Also, you know, another, you know, when you get below 25%, you just want everything you can have, and this is going to help for that. Uh, and then finally, we put our last few points into the explosives. We're going to get, whenever we roll, we drop a bomb, which is going to heal and damage people. And then we also have increased the uh, radius of explosives, and that's going to be beautiful for our bombs, so they hit more enemies as well as more allies. So that's pretty much the amp part of it. Like I say, it's focused on the experimental turrets. And that's going to lead us into talking about our skills, where we have a few turrets on bar, as you can see. Um, so I'll just take my bomb kit out, actually, for a second here. We have the gun equipped, and we do it mostly for the utility skills, the um, immobilize. This is, you know, some pretty good damage. Uh, the knockback is great for getting people out of your base. And then the jump shot to do a bit more damage, as well as to get around, which is great. Uh, we take the healing turret, um, obviously for the AoE heals as well. It's a, it's a turret, so it goes in our build, and it's just a really good heal these days. Uh, bomb kit for the healing bombs as well as the damage, and a bunch of, you know, you've got condition damage, which you're going to do, and it's not going to be a terrible amount of damage, it's just not buffed up since we don't have much condition damage stacked. But, you know, this, you know the immobilize, the... All those things are going to really, like, what would you got in here? It's the uh, the glue bomb, the uh, smoke bomb, that's really good for group fights. The um, concussive bomb, also great for group fights. It's just very handy to have this. And it also comes with the uh, big old bomb, which is beautiful for getting people out of your base. And for healing people, because it's a bomb. Uh, so we got the rocket turret and the thumper turret. When people come and attack me, I generally drop both of them, because you're going to get the retaliation spike right away. Uh, because people are going to come and nuke you right away, so that's really good to do. And then once the initial damage is done, I like to activate them, so they can start getting uh, hit by them. Obviously, we're going to take Supply Crate, because it's pretty much the only viable engineer um, ultimate, usually. As well as it's going to drop more turrets for us, which means more buffs and a stun. So And the heal packets, I mean, it's just really good. Uh, and then we're going to move up here, and we're just going to the big old bomb, obviously. We've got the Healing Mist, which is just an extension of our healing turret. We've got the Rocket, which is fun to shoot at people. I mean, just some extra damage to groups. And then Rumble, which releases a Shockwave, inertial damaging nearby foes, as well as, um, you know, Stun Break, which is great. So that's pretty much the build. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at our stat choices here. Uh, so we have the rifle, like I said, and then in the rifle we have the Sigil of Benevolence, which is going to increase our outgoing heals. Um, and that's the, kind of the big thought here, is we have increased outgoing heals, and then we also have the Rune of the Monk, which is going to increase our outgoing heals as well, and then just increase our boon duration, really good for this. Our healing, which is great, 25% um, chance to heal when you're struck for us. Like, it's just really, really meshing together with what we're doing here. Finally, we take the Cleric Amulet for the healing power. Um, the toughness is great to stay alive. And then the power, because like I said before, our damage really does come from just the solid hit and not so much from the conditions. Not that the conditions are bad, per se. Um, so this is the build, really. You could do variations on this. I've tried some where I've maybe took down the healing a bit and put in some uh, grenades or something like that. Um, it's interesting. You'd go kind of condition-y then. You know, but this is really the core healing um you know team fight but you can solo with it too you're a great bunker which is great it's just a lot of fun i'm going to put some videos up in the next little while with this build being used obviously um because i've had a lot of good games and i want to put them together i was going to put it in this video like i've done before in the past but there was just so many good moments that i think i'm gonna to have to make at least one video by itself if not more um, but it's a really good build. I hope you guys try it out if you've been looking and struggling in PvP with your engineer to find somewhere you like. 
or if you've just wanted to be you know a support character which is fun to be sometimes um, I hope you liked the video if you did give the thumbs up um, obviously subscribe to our channel if you like Guild Wars 2 if you like Wildstar um, leave a comment on your thoughts about the build as well as the thoughts about engineers in uh, Guild Wars 2 um, and then as always thanks for watching